And you know, one of the phrases, getting to the lesson now, one of the phrases that sometimes I say is it came to pass. And we all understand that, you know, the idea that the phrase it came to pass is right along, you know, there's a song, time is filled with swift transition. In other words, everything just goes on and moves. You think about the Bible as a whole. You know, you're looking at well over 6,000 years that God created the heaven, the earth, and the seas, and all that in them is. A lot has happened during that time as the, the Bible tells us. And in the Bible, you find that there's about 452 verses that contain the phrase, it came to pass. You know, it's almost like God wants us to know that life isn't stagnant. Life goes on. No matter what we do, no matter what we wish, you know, sometimes I wish I could just put a standstill on things, but it doesn't work that way. Time goes on. Things come to pass. Now, whenever you think about that, you look in the Bible, and you find that this is a good thing and a bad thing at times. I've got down uh, on your notes there, I believe, just uh, three examples, biblical examples of change that, that show us that change does come, but also it can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. For example, in the book of Genesis 3, you find God created, and as we mentioned in Exodus 20 and verse 11, in six days, God created the heaven, the earth, the seas, and all that in them is. Well, that record is given there in Genesis 1 and 2. And you look and you find in Genesis 3 that here is uh, Eve, as she has begun to fall into some temptations already. She's looking at the tree that God said, don't eat of that tree. But you find there in Genesis, the uh, third chapter, that in verse 1 through 3, that she is there, and the serpent came upon her, and the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree in the midst of it, God said, You shall not eat of it. Now you think about the picture of the place in which they live, they dwelt. God planted the garden. And you know there was no death there, there was no decay. Everything was beautiful. The only negative in there, you might say, is don't eat of this one tree. But everything else, he, he, God told them, said just dress and keep the garden. It's so beautiful that really whenever you look at the Bible, you find that as you describe heaven in the book of Revelation, the tree of life is in the midst of it. That's the tree that they were cast away from, but these beauty, beautiful things there, the beauties that they beheld, all went away. Satan deceived her. He was more subtle than any beast of the field. And he convinced her, and I, like I've said before, I, I sure hope this is just a synopsis of discussion that it just wasn't just this. But anyway, he, he simply told her, no, that's not right. God just knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes are going to be open. You'll be as God's knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food. It was pleasant the eyes, a tree to, to uh, be desired, to make wise. She took of the fruit, did eat, gave to her husband, and he did eat. Eyes were open, and they now realize they're naked. Sin, all these things had come into the garden now. And you find the result was... In chapter 4, in verse 3, in the process of time it came to pass, Cain brought forth of the fruit of the ground of the offering of the Lord, and Abel his brother brought forth. Cain and his offering, God had not respect. Cain was wroth. He killed his brother. Well, they were now out of the garden. God had told them, you're out. He pushed them out of the garden lest they eat of the tree of life. Remember that life? Tree of life in the book of Revelation? We can't let them eat of it. So he cast them out of the garden, put cherubim there to refrain them from going back in. But there is the change. It came to pass. The beauty of the garden, but it came to pass. They were cast out. Brother killed brother. How horrible. You look in the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, you find another event. You find in Genesis, the sixth chapter, that God looks and he sees in verse uh, 7, 
He said, I'm going to destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I made them. The reason was the very thought of their heart was on evil continually. But the next verse, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. That's an amazing statement. Grace. God's grace has always been around. It isn't a New Testament phenomena as some would, phenomenon, as some would say. Some people say, well, laws in the Old Testament, grace in the New Testament. They hadn't got as far as chapter 6, verse 8 of the Bible if they say that. But Noah found that grace because he would simply do what God said. And so here in the midst of this wicked world that God says, I'm not going to allow it to go on, Noah built an ark. He prepared an ark just as God had said. The result was, you find, as the record goes on, that it came to pass. You go over to Genesis, the 8th chapter. Look in verse 13. It came to pass in the 603rd, uh, first year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the waters were dried up off the earth. Noah removed the covering for the ark, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. The great flood had come. Wickedness had been destroyed, wiped off from the face of the earth. And now Noah, who began in that wicked place, saved his family. And they're now in this world. A blessed place. Change came about. It came to pass. Wickedness came to pass. Glory was found. That description, of course, in 1 Peter, the third chapter, where baptism doth also now save us. And the like figure is Noah. His family was saved. Those eight souls saved. Well, that's the change that he talks about. And then you go on over Genesis, the 11th chapter. Here, after the flood, he had told them, you go out, you multiply, you fill the earth. But in the book of Genesis, you find that in chapter 10, that, or chapter 12, 11, I'll get it in a minute, they decided they're going to build a tower. They were all of one language. They descended from this common ancestry. And instead of going out and doing what God said, they're going to build a tower. Why? Reach up to heaven. Why? So we can make ourselves a name. So it came to pass there that they journeyed from the east. They found a plain in the land of Shinar. They dwelt there. And it talks about after that. They decided to build this tower. So there's the great thing. They had everything they needed. They were in this world that God had cleansed, had brought forth. They should have gone forth and put God first, realizing what he had done, the grace that was there available, not only for Noah, but all that would follow that path of simply saying, God is God. Let me follow him. But the fact is, they ended up being scattered abroad. God went down, confounded the language sideline if you study about evolution and the time frame in there see how long they'd say it takes for the various languages we have to develop they don't have enough time there's no way that language developed from a common source and just evolved there had to be some place that it was confounded various languages brought forth well here you have the answer how did we get all the various languages the dialects and such But anyway, here it is. The change is made. So on and on, these changes go. And you just read in the book of Genesis, and it happens over and over again. You can go through the scriptures all the way. You can look after the the time of revelation from God had closed, about 100 A.D. No more revelation. We have all things that pertain to life and Godliness. But life goes on. It changes. It goes on all the time. What determines whether it's good or whether it's a bad change? Now, one of the changes that came about is in the book of Deuteronomy. Here, the children of God, remember, they had been taken into the uh, land of Egypt, put into captivity because of the various providences of God. 
They ended up, they were under oppression by the Egyptian leaders, but God heard their pleas. He sent in Moses as a deliverer to bring them out. They went out. God brought them across the Red Sea. Even though they got there, they murmured, we should have stayed there, we're going to die. They crossed over. He took them through. They continued to murmur. God's still working with them, showing them these things. And uh, go in and take the land. Well, we know. Kadesh Barnea, they went in, they spied out the land, said, we can't do it. As a result, they wandered 40 years. At the conclusion of that 40 years of wandering, you find the book of Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law, that's what the word literally means. The law is given to them, reminding them, you're going to go into the land. You're going to possess this land. But here are some warnings. Amongst them, in Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, you find in verse 26 through 28, he says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Good, bad. Your life's going to go on. You're going to go into this land. And you're going to make decisions. Things are going to come to pass. But in this instance, you're going to make some decisions as to what comes to pass, just as it was done in the past. He says, if you, a you want a blessing or a curse, Blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. Simple. Remember, you wandered 40 years because you didn't do what I said. But if you change your mind, you change your heart, you change your actions, you'll have a blessing if you obey the commandments. But he says there's going to be a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. And then he said it shall come to pass. When the Lord God hath brought thee into this land, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim, the curse upon Mount Ebal. There was a, a illustration they got. But he told them, it's your choice. It was a choice in the garden. It was a choice with Noah, those surrounding him. He was a preacher of righteousness, trying to tell them the right way. It was a choice in Genesis 11. Are you going to do what I said? Or are you going to stop and aggrandize yourself, build a tower to yourself? Each one of those was the result of a choice. Well, what about our lives? You and I. You think about that, and you know, one thing that we learn, if you ever look in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes is a, a, a book that was written by Solomon, and the desire of it was to see what is good for the Son of Man, that he might do all the days of his life. What makes life worth living? But he begins the book with this very startling statement. Came to pass, in essence. In chapter 1 and verse 1, the words of the preacher, the son of David, the king in Jerusalem, vanity of vanities, said the preachers, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh unto the sun? One generation passeth away, another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also riseth, the sun goeth down, hasteth to his place where he rose. The wind goeth towards the south, turneth about to the north, whirleth about continually. The wind returneth again according to his circuits. The rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, there that they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. His eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear filled with the hearing. The thing that hath been is that which shall be. That which is done is that which shall be done. There's no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It's been already of old time, which was before us. There's no remembrance of the former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of the things that are to come with those that shall come after. You look at that and he, he tells them as he begins this book, you need to examine your life. But you need to realize it's going to come to pass. One generation's going to die, but another one's going to arrive. How long is that going to go on? I don't know. Only the Lord knows when this world's going to end. But the fact is, from the very beginning when he created all things, it began a, a series of generations. A generation began, a generation ceased. Another generation began, another generation ceased. He said, you see it in the world around about you. You know, the winds blow. If you look, study science now, the circuits of the wind. These things happen. The seas, the very system. You know, well, here comes the rain. Where is it going to go? 
the ocean's going to fill up. No, they didn't understand about the whole system of evaporation, clouds, rain coming down. That's a cycle. But he says it goes on. You see that? You may not understand it. So over and over he told them that. But the question comes, what about us? We are that generation. What generation is that? We're the generation that came to pass. You ever heard anybody say, well, I remember the good old days. Well, they're talking about a generation before. But now, in my day, things are different. And I got news for you. In the generation to come, things are going to be different in a sense. But the fact is, it's going to continue on and on and on. The whole cycle of things. You know, the, the Lord promised whenever he destroyed the earth with a flood. He said, until the earth is finally destroyed, seed time, harvest, all these things, they're going to go on. You hear all these things, you know, well, we're going to destroy the world. This, that. No. We need to take care of the world we're in. But the world's going to end when God wants it to. And until that time, there's going to be seed time and harvest. There's going to be the change of seasons. It may have a cooling uh, cycle. It may have a heating cycle, as you can look back through history and see it's had. But life's going to go on. One generation is going to pass away. Another generation is going to come. But we live in this current generation. What about our life? You know, it's going to come to pass certain things in my life. I began this life. September the 5th, 1951, I was born to a loving family. I was cherished, the baby. I was blessed in so many ways. I grew up. I began making decisions, some bad, some good. You know, I found out Probably too late in life. I hope other people are a little less dense than me. But you know, if you keep the commandments of the Lord, it's a blessing. If you don't, it's a curse. And I think all of us have seen that. We see it, we see it in the Bible record, we see it in history around about us, and then we see it in our life. I make a decision. Jack, you want to be blessed? You're in this land. Well, did God prepare America for me? No, this applies to anyone. God's not a respected person. In every nation, these things are true. You want a blessing? Follow my commandments. You want a curse? Reject me. It's that simple. Sometimes our lives don't grasp the simple truth. It's going to come to pass. What's going to come to pass? My choices. But you see, and like I said, I think everybody, this is a Sunday night crowd. We're the cream of the crop, aren't we? You know, we're the ones that, you know, we don't have a, well, how much do I have to do? Now, I realize there are people who can't be here. That's not who I'm talking about. But we are the ones who desire to follow God on this earth, to live this way. What, what, does, that, what does that do? Romans 8, chapter, and verse 28. We find that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. He had said earlier in the chapter, there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. In other words, I make that decision. I get in Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. I'm a child of God by faith because I have been baptized into Christ. I make that decision. That's the call. I was called by the gospel. I responded to it. And now I determine not to walk in the flesh, but I'm going to walk after the Spirit. And God says, you know, you do that, and I'm with you. Hebrews, uh, the, the 12th chapter, 13th chapter, verse 6, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God's with us. What an amazing blessing that is. That doesn't mean everything's going to be good. You look at those who followed God throughout the Scriptures, Bad things happen, but you hold on to God and you can say, like I've said before, you know, I, I can walk up to somebody who's a child of God. I know they're facing struggles. I know they're facing trials. I know they're facing heartache. And I can put my arm around them and I'm going to say, it's going to be okay. 
Well, that's just your... No, that's what God said. I know what you're going through is horrible. It hurts. But it's going to be okay. Stay with God. God's for us. He says, if God's for us, who can be against us? Who's God's for? Who's God for? Those who make the decision, God, I'm going to stay with you. I'm not going to leave. It's going to be hard. But I know you'll never leave me nor forsake me. So I make the decision, Matthew the 6th chapter, each one of us faces the times whenever worry overcomes us. I mean, it gets hard. And you think, I can't do it. I can't make it. I don't know how to go on. And we have a temptation to turn away. And he says, you can't make the wrong choice. You can't serve two masters. You stay with God. You lay up treasure in heaven. And he goes on, he gives the illustration. He says, you, you look at the, the flowers in the field. You look at the birds. God cares about them. How much more do you think he cares about you? And so he sums it up and he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. In other words, God is going to be with you. It's going to work out. It's going to be okay. Well, how do I know that? How do I know what way that is? Well, remember back in Deuteronomy, in Genesis 3, 6, 11, God gave commands. He said, here's, here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want you to do. Man, I wish God would speak to me today. <laughs> 2 Peter 1 and verse 3, He has given us all things that pertain to life and God. You know, I, I spoke about it this morning, some sign. I don't need a sign. I've got the book. I know what he says. And I know that God wants me in heaven. He wants me. He wanted Adam and Eve to be blessed in the garden. He wanted people in Noah's day to be blessed, but they rejected him. But he still found Noah who found grace in his eyes, and he blessed him and his family. He wanted those who stopped and wanted to build a tower he wanted them to go on and do what he said and be a blessing and be blessed he didn't do it but i can make the choice i learned from that and i say this is who i'm going to be and i know that he's given me the pattern second Timothy 3 16 and 17 all scripture is given by inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction and in righteousness that jack williams can be complete, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. You put your name in there because this word, Jesus said, you can know the truth. I can know the truth. And that truth's going to set me free. And so I look at that and I see this is what God gave me. So you look and you think about it. Okay, everybody here is going to face so many changes. And if you were to go back and write your history. How many times could you put in there, it came to pass? Came to pass, Jack Williams was born on that day. Came to pass that he grew up in a, an amazing family. Came to pass that he grew up and he decided to make <coughs> decisions. It came to pass that Jack Williams was tempted by the world came to pass. Jack Williams saw who God was, what God wanted, what God provided, the hope he gives. It came to pass, Jack responded to the gospel. It came to pass that Jack walked with the Lord. It came to pass that Jack, even as a child of God, was tempted and he succumbed. He sinned. But it came to pass that Jack went to God knowing that he was faithful and just to forgive his sins if he'd simply confessed them. It came to pass that Jack went on with his life that way. With many other, it came to pass. One day, you'll say it came to pass that Jack Williams died. Another generation is going to begin. Nothing new under the sun. All of those things have happened before and they'll happen again. 
what is the come to pass in my life? You see, I decide. I didn't decide to come into this world. I didn't decide the family I had, but whenever I grew to the time that I could make decisions, I decided to make decisions. Some good, some bad, but ultimately one amazing that I became a child of God. And he said, it can come to pass that this place I go to prepare for you, you can be with me. What a blessing it is to learn the lessons that it came to pass and then to realize that, yes, it's true. Jesus, that good shepherd in John, the 10th chapter, go over and read that chapter sometime. It's just so amazing how he laid down his life for his sheep. He said, I want you with me. I want it to come to pass that we're together. How much do you want that? He gave his life for his sheep. And so I look at that and I say, okay, is this me? I've mentioned so many times, and I'll keep on mentioning it because I'm just amazed at him, the Apostle Paul. He says, time my departure is at hand, but I'm ready. Go back and study the Apostle Paul's life, and you'll say it came to pass, it came to pass, it came to pass, it came to pass. Words might not be there, but the actions are. But the decisions he made ultimately led him to the fact that he could say, I'm ready to be offered. Because the Lord, the righteous judge, he's going to give me a crown. But then he said, not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. Remember Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Did it come to pass that that's your goal in life? I'd say it did. I'd say that's why you're here tonight. But maybe it's come to pass that you've slipped away. Or maybe it's come to pass you haven't made that initial decision to be a child of God. But remember, your life, my life, life is a series of it came to pass. Make sure that you get to the point that it came to pass that I surrendered my will to God. I was baptized. I rose to walk in the newness of life. I stumbled, but he was there. But ultimately it will come to pass as I go along that path that I'll be with him for eternity. If that's your goal, just as sure as the Bible record is filled with those come to pass, you can start that. And we can help you as we stand and sing the song of invitation. <laughs>